In this video, we're looking at the new Evo One CNC Pro by Maker Dreams. Stick around. In this video, we're reviewing the Evo One CNC Pro by Maker Dreams. Now, you may have seen the Evo One CNC on my other videos. Um, it's one of my favorite machines. It was a solid machine. Well, this is the newest version they just came out with. They've upgraded a lot of the specs and rigidity of the machine. And I'll tell you, uh, coming out of the box, it was about 20 pounds heavier. Do your conversion, but it was 55 kilograms to ship. Now, unpacking it, it's packed in the box in foam well. Um, it's got some instructions here about how to set up and connect and use the machine. Um, but these are things that we already know, right? So initially the gas shocks need to be connected to the door. So we connect those things up. They just, they're threaded and they screw in there. Need to move that gantry up a little bit to get the accessory package out. With the accessory package out, we can start to see the, the nice new spindle. Taking off all of that protective coating off of the acrylic. Boy, it only looks this good once, right? As soon as you start milling, then it's all downhill. But that's okay. Um, all of this aluminum flashing, this eighth inch aluminum is also protected. Move that around. Uh, this machine is much more solid uh, with, with between nine and 12 millimeter aluminum plate uh, for the frame, for the platform. We've also got these larger linear rails, this larger top plate with a drag chain and, and this brand new beautiful custom spindle. Now this is only a 500 watt spindle, but it's not reduced like most other machines. On the top, you see that we have the Z-axis NEMA 17 through a belt to the 1210C5 ball screw, which is behind the spindle. That nice new air-cooled spindle uh, with an ER16 collet. Very nice setup, very clean design, solid Z gantry. Like I said, made out of 9mm and above plate aluminum. These HGH15 linear rails, which is an upgrade from the previous ones. Um, these are solid on all axis, X, Z, and Y. We'll make for uh, minimal backlash here. And we've got a, a 12 millimeter platform, which also is connected to HGH15 linear rails on the bottom side. This thing is rock solid and closing it up. We'll look at those details a little closer as we run it through its paces. Externally, this thing is nearly identical to the previous model, but we can see inside there's a lot of change. I'm anxious to put this thing to work. Open up the accessories. Comes with a nice box filled with uh, goodies and we're about to see what the heck is in there. Accessories are always necessary. We've got uh, hold down clamps. These are steel hold down clamps and M6 screws. An e-stop button. Looks like they've changed that. It used to have wood sides, but they've uh, gone with black plastic. A machine handbook or notebook. Power cord. Uh, screws for the wasteboard. A touch plate for probing your Z position. A couple chuck and call it spanners. A low profile vise with additional screws. A seven set uh, ER call it set for the ER16. And a nice little toolkit uh, with, what is it, nine or so bits? And a USB A to B cable. And some candy from Italy. Interesting. All right, so slide this stuff out of the way. Now let's look at that wasteboard. Wasteboard and the platform is milled with 25 millimeter on center threaded holes to clamp down just about anything you need. And that's it in a nutshell, the accessory pack that comes with the machine. 
everything you need to get started the book the screws the touch plate the e-stop the bits it's time to put that wasteboard on this machine and that's done with just the four screws they give you m6 screws and we're good to go now i didn't bother leveling the wasteboard we're gonna go with it for now and we'll see how our performance looks For the e-stop, they've all got these little eighth inch headset plugs. They just plug right in the back. They're clearly labeled for which plug to use. And the touch probe also has a headphone jack right next to the e-stop. And that's used for our Z probing. Now changing this collet, this collet has a, a unique wrench that has a couple slots and the spring collets go right up inside there. They don't snap in like some chucks do. In this case, uh, it's a little backwards. I'm used to tightening the, the collet chuck, but in this case, it's easier to or tighten the neck. No, so it's a little backwards for me getting used to that. All of my other machines are, are the opposite. Now the machine's ready to go. Let's get started. All right, over in Fusion 360, we're going to start off by creating this, this holder for our tools, for our collets, for the notebook that come along with the uh, EVO 1 CNC. To do that, create this sketch. And from that sketch, we've allocated spaces for all the tools, all the collets. We'll put this notebook in the back and then some area over on the side for some nuts, bolts, or even uh, those hold down clamps that come with it. So stepping through the design, round those corners. The intention is maybe that this will be milled out of aluminum to uh, demonstrate that. And then we're going to have, uh, similar to the pendant that I created a while back, we're going to have some black acrylic that's going to be uh, to accent and show off that aluminum. It's also going to be milled out in the same profile and to serve as a deeper section. And then we're also going to mill out a section of wood and that wood is going to uh, be of the same type that the side panels on the EVO 1 are made. That will give us a chance to mill all three of those materials and we'll see how that comes out. Alright, so in the Fusion 360 manufacturer area, we set up the toolpaths for the three different components of this build. The top piece, which is made out of aluminum, we're going to uh, pilot out those holes, bore them out, uh, the countersink for the cap head screws. Then we're going to run pockets. These pockets will have tabs. And then we're going to run contour. And then a chamfer on everything to make it look nice and clean it up. Now these will all be using the, well, mostly be using the bits that were provided by uh, Maker Dreams, and we're, which is a 1 8 inch 12 millimeter flute length, um, single flute. Uh, it looks to be a carbide bit, um, and so we'll be running this. Let's look at some of the speeds that we added in here. 20,000 RPMs, 350 millimeters a second, with a feed per tooth of 0.0175. It's a little uh, conservative, um, but I think um, I'm not too sure about the machine rigidity or the, the bit, so I'm going to be a little conservative, and we'll see how those play out. All right. Um, so we're using that for all of those three different operations with the exception of the chamfer which is coming from a Kodiak cutting tools and this is a 90 degree chamfer or 45 degrees whichever way you're looking at it. For the next piece is the body. I'll look at the body here. This is black acrylic, quarter inch acrylic. Um, we're going to countersink that. That's how the aluminum is going to sit down in it. And then we are going to run uh, similar operations. We're going to do an adapt 2D adaptive clearing, which is going to create that large pocket area. And for this, we use the automatic pocket identification, which is kind of nice. And so in the geometry tab, you just do pocket recognition, identify the minimum radius, which it's automatically generating from the, the tool diameter. In this case, we're going to be using a five millimeter tool to uh, single flute carbide flat end mill to clear out this area pretty quickly. So we'll be running this a lot quicker. Um, this identifies the pockets. We're going to run it only at 1600 because this is just black cast acrylic. 
Uh, but we're going to be running at a thousand millimeters uh, cut feed rate with a two millimeter step down. So it's going to should be able to plow right through that, and we'll see how well it fares in under those conditions. And then we uh, mill out those pockets with a two point or with a three one five or the one eighth inch flat end mill single flute uh, to clean that up. And then we do the contour cut and another chamfer on this because this edge is exposed and for aesthetics it'll match the the uh, aluminum top plate that's going to be nested into this. Um, once that's complete, the body's complete, then we do the base. And the base is going to be out of a solid piece of oak. Uh, we're going to mill out those similar features. And of course, we could have milled this all out of a single piece of lucite or uh, aluminum or whatever we wanted to. But of course, we're going to make it look fancy and cool with the top, uh, the face, body, and base. Um, design pattern um, to make it look as good as the the machine does and to just encourage better design in your projects better I don't know if it's better it looks cool to me so we'll go from that <laughs> so for the the base setup all we're gonna be doing is milling out those pockets they kind of it buttons them up and caps them there so th this is only a, a few millimeter countersink and we'll use that eighth inch single flute flat end mill uh, running at similar speeds to the acrylic, a little bit slower because of the hard oak, um, um, but similar speeds. Let's look at that. Want the details? Uh, 1600 RPM, uh, 350 millimeter, but we can speed that up as well. And then finally, we'll be running the contour again with tabs. We'll be able to clean those up afterward, and that should finish it up. Once they're all complete, then we'll be able to bring them together the finished product which looks just like that all right so let's get these tool paths exported get over the machine start fixturing up some raw material before we get too far electronic projects always start with good circuit designs and for that i rely on altium designer from simple to complex if you haven't taken a chance to download a free copy and see what you're missing i've put links in the description and with altium designer creating these complex projects is a piece of cake through your development, you'll be empowered to do your best work as you grow into its more advanced capabilities. The link in the description below will allow you a free trial version of the software so that you can check it out and see what Enterprise Class ECAD feels like. Now back to the overview. So I used three strips of Neato tape to hold down the aluminum, which was six millimeter aluminum plate, onto the platform and I roughly squared it up. Uh, nothing was critical. There was some tolerance and room to play around the profile. And I thought I'd use these hold down clamps. I didn't have long enough screws, so I just made do with them at an angle, which I typically wouldn't do, uh, just to ensure they didn't break loose. Uh, milling, I was only using a one millimeter depth of cut, and it ran really smooth. Now in the future I'd go much more aggressive, but I didn't want to break these bits as they came with the machine and I wanted to be sure to at least finish this first project before I start pushing it on uh, to its limits. So running all the profiles, we cut out the aluminum and completed that and then subsequently I would move on. Uh, and this, this phase of the project, milling this aluminum, demonstrates that it needs air assist or a mister or something to get those particles out out of those channels because with all the slotting operations you know it's recutting those chips and damaging the surface finish so while it looked great in the areas that were open in the deep channels I could tell that it was it was gonna have a rough finish and then eventually I ran the, the chamfer operation using the 90 degree chamfer on all the edges to clean up the, the finish of the design right there you can see the edge surface milled surface that didn't wasn't in a channel it had super clean and a super nice finish on the edge there uh, in the channels where the chip wasn't chips weren't evacuated and we don't have air assist um, that was a bit of an issue so i think in the future that'll be one of the first upgrades to the machine is to put some air on it unclamping it and then prying it up with my scraper I found that that thing was seriously attached and it didn't need those clamps. I could have pushed it much harder um, and certainly will in the upcoming videos. With that machine, you can see I had a bunch of tabs in there and just started popping them out. There were only 
20 20 thousandths tabs so popped them all out and then hit it with the the brillo wheel to deburr it and finish it off and then i put on that larger wheel to finish the face as i didn't surface this initially uh, the face needed to be cleaned up and there you have it the first part which with the countersunk cap head screw holes as well as the profiles to hold all the bits next was the black acrylic black acrylic milled like ice cream you know it just cut through it easily it didn't have any problem I, it has this pocket cut where that aluminum part will seat down in this acrylic um, about three millimeters and so once that pocket was complete, then I switched out uh, the five millimeter flat end mill with a, a eighth inch flat end mill to cut out all of the pocket holes and do the contour cut. Cleaning it up, you can see that that top edge, that, which wasn't milled, is super shiny. We've got a chamfer on there and the pocket cut. Profiles all look nice, clean, and sharp. That's going to seat right in that. We'll see that a little bit later. Finally, the last piece is going to be the base, which was the wood. This was a uh, half inch uh, oak, solid oak, uh, and first faced that down to get it the right thickness, and then swapped it out for an eighth inch end mill, which we milled these pockets, or so I thought. Turns out my tool path was only milling contours, uh, and it wasn't until I actually cleaned it up realized I had to go back and mill these pockets out. So once that was complete, I milled out all of that material in the pockets that were already had contour cuts, and that would be good to go. Now with all three parts here, we've got the oak base, the acrylic middle, and the aluminum top. This is, this is totally overkill, right? Nobody would do this in their right mind, but we're testing this machine and this is a neat way to do it. So looking at that beautiful aluminum chamfered top, um, this is gonna seat right in that little pocket cut on the acrylic. Now I didn't give any tolerance in Fusion, so this thing fits like a glove. It is a super tight, almost, uh, dare I say, airtight fit. You know, as it slides together, it just feels like they're the perfect match. Now in future tests, I'll, I'll get my indicators out and take some final measurements on some of these parts, but this thing fit perfectly. It was, it was amazingly precise. So I can only assume that that machine, um, the tolerances and backlash is super minimal. Um, we'll run, run it through some tests to prove that. But this fit it was just amazing. And it really um, is, is the difficult part of this project and but it really just seats on top of that wood and then we've got uh, several m3s that go through with some feet and get that hardware together and start assembling this and this is just a matter of putting those lock nuts on the back tightening down all those m3 screws now while the fit and finish on this little quick project um, looks beautiful um, it's mostly due to the the parts and how they milled in their finish um, granted, the aluminum was was brushed. Um, everything else was raw right off the machine, uh, which looked super clean. No deflection. Um, then put a couple of these rubber feet on the bottom. And this thing is good to go. So, you can see how it holds all the collets, holds all the end mills. Also has room for more, as well as the machine notebook. There you have it. So that was a quick demonstration run through several different material types and the machine really didn't even flinch. So we're going to have to up the ante here and push it harder on some more challenging projects. But if you're looking to mill any of these types of materials with this machine, this is one of the most formidable and rigid and capable machines that I've seen. Hopefully you enjoyed this look at the Evo One CNC Pro. The next generation of the Evo One CNC, which you've already seen on my channel, I've listed it as my favorite machine. Well, this this is raising the bar beyond that. It's added 20 pounds of weight just in the body and structure of the machine, making it more rigid, 
less mechanical uh, resonance through the machine when it's milling hard materials like aluminum. It also demonstrated that its capabilities far exceed this little project. This little project demonstrated a few different material types and its accuracy and its ability to mill through those and it didn't even shake a stick at them. Needless to say, this was a, a non-issue for that machine. Over the next few videos, we'll be throwing more difficult challenges at it. We'll see just how far we can push this spindle, the 500 watt brushless spindle, and the, the structure of the machine to produce great results. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to keep you notified when those videos are released. If you like this particular video, give it a thumbs up. In the meantime, be safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too.